everyone, welcome back to my channel for a new and also slightly different reading vlog because in today's video or what for me will be a video I film over the course of the next week I am going to be reading books recommended to me and lent to me by my boyfriend <laughs> so I have two books here that my boyfriend recently lent me after really enjoying and telling me that he thought I would also enjoy them so I thought why don't I test those recommendations and naturally our relationship compatibility although I think we may be too far in at this point to change our minds <laughs> um, with our reading tastes Although all jokes aside, I am actually just super excited to read both of these. They do sound genuinely fantastic. Before I tell you more about the books, however, I do want to give a massive, massive shout out and thank you to the sponsor of today's video who are Anna Luisa. So you may have heard me mention Anna Luisa in a previous video. They are a jewellery designer and brand who just create some of my absolute favourite pieces and have created some of my favourite pieces in my own collection. I did show off a few pieces by them in a previous video and ever since I received those pieces they have been my go-to items of jewellery. They're my most worn earrings and necklace above everything else I own. I absolutely adore them and for good reason because one of the things I absolutely love and adore about Ana Luisa is that they create incredibly long-lasting high quality pieces of jewellery and if like me you really enjoy accessories and fashion and styling outfits and putting all the little pieces together but you're also trying to avoid disposable items so fashion and jewellery items that only last for a few months or a year and then have to be thrown out because they have been basically like falling apart in your hands then Ana Luisa is just such a fantastic brand to check out because they do prioritise creating these long lasting pieces and they also use recycled materials for all of their solid gold and sterling silver jewellery which again it's just fantastic that they're reusing metals already out there that have been used in the past and are getting a new lease of life in these pieces and the pieces are beautiful. I'm wearing some of them right now and I'll show you them in close-ups but this necklace in particular is probably my new favourite necklace. It's elegant and simple enough without also being too plain and I like something that has a little bit of quirk and a little bit of style to it and I feel like this necklace does. They also sent me some new earrings to add to my collection which I'm always thrilled about because earrings are my go-to form of jewellery. I wear earrings every single day even when I'm wearing no other jewellery. So they sent me these gorgeous little snug huggy sleeper hoops which have a fastening that allows you to sleep with them because there's um, nothing poking out behind your ear and they're super duper comfortable. I've actually been wearing these for the past few weeks and haven't taken them out. They haven't irritated my ears which are quite sensitive. Plus they also sent me these absolutely adorable little oval shaped hoops which I really like. They're a really nice balance between like big statement hoop and very simple stud. So I just adore these new pieces and if you haven't noticed me wearing them in videos already you're probably going to be seeing them popping up a lot in the future because probably never going to take them off. Um, I absolutely love them and I'm also just incredibly grateful to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and supporting my content. They will of course be linked in the description box down below if you'd like to check them out. They're currently running one of their biggest sales of the season. You can get 20% off every single piece on their website as it stands. They may also be something that you might want to check out for the gifting season which is approaching and in the meantime let's crack on with the vlog. So the two books that my wonderful partner Chris has lent to me are both actually sci-fi. We have a science fiction novel here called This Is How You Lose the Time War by two authors, by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar. And this is written by two authors who've taken alternative perspectives. So we have two main characters who are AI alien species beings. Uh, they're not human. I'm not exactly sure to what extent they are machine and organic but they're somewhere in between and they are both fighting on opposite sides of the time war. So this is a war between unknown species and alien races that is taking place across time and like I said they're on opposing sides and they're sent out on these missions and quite often end up encountering one another or just coming in behind the other person in their wake so they start to write each other letters 
letters and in these letters they slowly form a friendship and then fall in love. And this I believe is a very character focused novel. Chris did describe it to me as quite an emotional read as well as being very beautifully written so I'm super excited to read this. It sounds right up my street. And on the topic of emotional sci-fi we also have On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden illustrated and written by because this is a graphic novel. A junky graphic novel but a graphic novel nonetheless. Here's a little insight into the illustrations inside. They look absolutely stunning. And not only did Chris obviously recommend and lend this to me but it's one that I've seen some other friends of mine online talk about like Sana and Mercedes. They have raved about Tilly Walden in the past so I've always had in the back of my mind to check out their work and I'm super pleased to have this one in my hands to read now. It's one that Chris in particular compared to The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and Firefly which is one of my favourite TV shows and one of my favourite books so of course I was sold. It's also very character driven from what I understand. It's about a young woman that joins the crew of a spaceship and is also recalling her childhood throughout her experiences. I don't know if it's because they tie together or there's similarities and parallels in what's going on now and what was going on then. I'm excited to find out though and apparently the queer representation is also fantastic so yes I'm so excited for both of these. Generally speaking Chris and I do have quite similar taste and I trust his recommendations so yeah I'm also really looking forward to taking you along on this journey with me and reading and reviewing these books. On a side note before I do get into the actual reading portion of this blog Chris and I do run an Instagram where we take pictures of discuss and review board games so if that's something you're also into then I'll link it in the description box down below. The account is called Just A Couple of meeples. We're big board game nerds so yeah if you are to go check us out but without further ado let's get into the reading. to my bedroom floor. I just realised how dishevelled I look. Oh well. <laughs> it's the evening, who cares. I wanted to update you on my reading and I'm currently sitting on the floor because I'm doing a jigsaw puzzle. Um, would you like to see? Uh, well I'll show you what the jigsaw puzzle is at least. It's this Sherlock Holmes jigsaw puzzle that I literally... No, I got it for my birthday, not Christmas. It's not been that long. Um, but still, it's been a while since I've did it. And I didn't mention before, but today is actually the anniversary of my dad passing away. So I just like felt this sort of desire to suddenly do a jigsaw puzzle because he loved jigsaw puzzles. So yeah, I'm doing that, chilling on my floor and having a really fun time because it's been a while since I did a jigsaw puzzle plus I love Sherlock Holmes, so that's awesome. And um, this is a really high quality jigsaw puzzle, by the way, like this is a really random comment, but high quality pieces. <laughs> um, it's from the brand, actually let me tell you since we're just down here chatting. Uh, okay, I don't know so I will just um, insert that information somewhere in the description box or on the screen. But um, I actually, as you'll have seen from the vlog footage, went out today. I had the day off work again. Like I said, it's a hard day today. Um, so I'd made plans with my friend Leanne to go book shopping. Another thing that, you know, like I loved doing with my dad and that my dad really enjoyed was books. So we did that. It was really nice. I was trying to see if I could see the book that I bought by actually. Don't know where I've put it. Um, I got the new Asterix <laughs> comic book, which is lovely. Um, so it was just sort of like a day of like self-care in that sense of sort of doing what felt right and um, remembering my dad. Um, but yeah, I did read some of my book which is why we are here. I read 40 pages of This Is How You Lose a Time War and I am adoring it. This book guys is stunning. Like the writing is gorgeous. I am really in love with the writing. It's so immersive and it's not a very long book. Like it's less than 200 pages but I am still speeding through that 40 pages that I've read. Like I whiplashed myself so quickly I read it because of the structure where in we have these two different 
um, creatures or AIs from different time periods as far as we know from different sides of this massive time war. They themselves don't even know much about each other. They don't know like what the world is like or what period in the world's history those persons live in. <laughs> God, it's hard to um, articulate time travel books, I think. Um, but it's in the far flung future and they're traveling like throughout history, like back into sort of, you know, like the time of like Genghis Khan <laughs> and um, more recent periods as well as like far, far into the future and leaving each other notes. And they leave each other these notes, one from the character red and one from the character blue. And then we go back and we go forward and we go back and we forward between the, the notes. And it's so engaging reading their exchanges and just getting these tidbits about the world they exist in and this time war which is not the subject of the book like the book is not focused on this time war or the sci-fi world is focused on these two characters and their exchanges and them developing this relationship entirely through letters and it's so well done i am adoring it and i cannot wait to see where it goes i don't know if it's going to be a happy one i don't know if it's gonna be a sad one i really don't know what to expect but i love character focused stories and that's very much what this is but i also love the layers of sci-fi intrigue and world building that are just like hinted at i love the way that's done so yeah really enjoying it so far so good thank you chris um but i'm gonna get back to my jigsaw puzzle because i'm quite enjoying it so i want to crack on with that and i'll probably update you tomorrow Everybody. So I actually planned on updating you last night after my writing sprints live stream on my channel, but <sighs> I was just knackered. <laughs> so I did not get around to it, but I've made progress on these upside down books. So I thought I would update you on that. So I am halfway through. This is how you lose the time war. And I mean, my earlier statement stands. This book is stunning. I am both finding the aspect of learning about this time war and what these two beings are doing as part of that war, as like soldiers, I guess, really, really interesting. So what they are doing is being sent to different periods in time in what also feels like multiple dimensions because they talk sometimes of there being like multiple Londons or multiple Socrateses <laughs> as if there's some in different timelines. Um, so they they go to these different timelines at different periods to either make things happen, to stop things happen, to interfere with things, to make sure things don't get interfered with on their side that aid in their larger goal. But you have no idea what their larger goal is. And it's not really important. <laughs> what you are basically just getting an insight into is the lives of these two beings as soldiers in this war. And it's a lot less like murder and killing you than you would expect from a wartime narrative. It's a lot more just like making sure somebody survives or doesn't do this job that they were going to do or make sure they invent something. And that is really fascinating. And their exchanges, the build up for being such a short book and me only having read about 100 pages is so sincere. <laughs> like I find their relationship simply via these letters so sincere and so endearing and something I've become so heavily invested in. The writing is stunning, the imagination is stunning and I'm just absolutely adoring this book. So far it's a five star and I really can't imagine that that will change. Um, I feel very emotionally attached to it. I've then read some of On a Sunbeam. Given how long this book is, I'm not that far into it. Um, I am on page 50, but as you can see, it's a chunky graphic novel. Yeah, it's over 500 pages, so I barely read 10%, but again, I'm really enjoying it. It's another one that's quite like a soft, emotional sci-fi, um, but a little bit less dramatic in the sense, obviously, they're not like 
traveling in time to like stop things happen or make things happen and um is a lot more like human but um what is going on is our protagonist has joined the crew of a spaceship that travel the galaxies and the solar systems and the universe to uh restore or tear down buildings so sometimes they're going to like restore historical buildings and make them beautiful again and bring them back to life or sometimes they're going to like knock down buildings and build offices in their place so it could be anything like that they're basically um like a construction company and she's joined this crew and she's getting to basically know all of her crew members and so far that's really all it's been about it's been two timelines we've got her getting to know her fellow crew members and then we've got the timeline of her reminiscing on her school days as a teenager and like I said it's just quite soft and it's really nice and it really really does remind me of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which is one of my favourite books so I'm really enjoying it I think both of these books are really imaginative and set in really imaginative sci-fi worlds with really vivid characters so big thumbs up so far <laughs> and that's kind of where I'm at with my reading um I have plenty of work to be getting on with today so I'm gonna do that and then read a little bit more in the evening most likely so I will check back in with you then that Chris you have a lot to answer for because this book took me through an emotional roller coaster I don't want to give anything away to those of you watching that haven't read this book but yeah there was just like a lot of emotional upheaval for me as a reader I was so invested my heartstrings were pulled at I had nerves and just all of that going on in my stomach I cannot really express it all to you um it was so much and so well done it was a superb book really 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 beautifully written and like dense in some ways like it's not as if it's a world I entirely understand like I said the world building was almost secondary to the to the character development um so I don't think you could ever fully understand the world, but it may be one that's worth rereading um, with a new perspective to sort of consider bits of it that didn't seem as important when you're reading it the first time. But it was beautiful to read, even if in moments um, the world baffled me because two things didn't baffle me, and that was the characters. They very, very much made themselves heard and seen and known and I love their story. But instead of dwelling on them, I'm gonna go to sleep. So yeah, that's my update. That's my review. This is a five star book. It's fantastic and such um like an incredible work of literature. And I'm always so impressed by two authors who can write so well together. It's so interesting. This is the author picture on the back of the two of them and I love it. Like I love the vibes. And I feel like the vibes were impeccable whilst writing as well. So thank you. Brilliant. Would recommend. So Chris is banned from ever recommending me books again, because apparently... They're all incredibly gut-wrenching <laughs> and emotional and I'm obviously joking. <laughs> they are also fantastic so I'm definitely going to continue to take recommendations from Chris. And all the wonderful things I had to say about the other book, to be honest, also stand for this. This was beautiful 
Um, not just in art style, I mean the art is absolutely stunning as well, but also in story and character development. I think I mentioned before this one takes place during two timelines. Our main character um, begins the story as um, the latest crew member on a spaceship that do construction work, but we also flash back to her teenage years at an all-girls boarding school and her first romance between another one of the students. And obviously you know something has changed. Some Something has happened. We don't know if it's something dramatic or just like life slowly altered as it went by that has brought her to the point in the current timeline. We don't know what's happened in between her being a teenager and an adult and for that reason as much as I was so invested and in love with the teenage story I always felt this sense of but where's it going to go? Because I know it's not necessarily going to go in a straight linear line and also where is the present storyline going to take us and is it going to tie back in with the previous timeline. I really enjoy multiple timeline novels because of that. I think they create an incredible sense of intrigue when they're done well because you feel invested in both timelines but both timelines also give you extra things to consider in the other one if that makes sense. It adds a lot of depth, sometimes confusion but also like emotion and I really really enjoy that and I think it's done really really well here. I really I love the protagonist but I also loved all the side characters who also get their stories explored in more detail so can I even really call them side characters? They felt just as important as our protagonist both to themselves, to each other and to her and they were a wonderful cast. Again if you did enjoy The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet you will love this. Like Chris was absolutely right, you 100% will enjoy this. Um, if you enjoyed the previous book I read in this video I think you'll also enjoy this and if you enjoyed this I think you'll enjoy the previous book I read in this video. Strangely enough there was a real theme in in the books that Chris lent me in that they were both quite character driven emotional sci-fi work although in very different formats one in a small novel and one in a chunky graphic novel but both authors I would read again or all three authors I would read again since the first one was by two authors in collaboration and I'm really pleased that I read them and I'm excited to see Chris tonight because we can chat about them so it's all worked out perfectly timed and I'm very pleased with that because I've got questions for him but before I go I do want to say another massive massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video Anna Luisa or this week's video Anna Luisa as you can see I'm still wearing my pieces I don't know if you've noticed but I've barely taken them off especially the ones that you can sleep in they have been so comfortable and I'm so pleased to have found a pair of like huggy hoops that I don't need to take out when I go to bed and don't irritate my ears so yeah thank you again Anna Luisa make sure to check them out in the link in the description box and take advantage of that sale otherwise I hope you have enjoyed this video happy reading and I'll see you all again in the next one bye everyone